Hi, and welcome to the next video in the numerical methods section. And we've gone through iteration and Newton Raphson, our two methods for uh, finding roots of equations. What we're going to be looking at in this one was how we can use it to locate stationary points. And essentially, what we're doing is applying either iteration or Newton Raphson to contextual problem solving, essentially. So let's just have a look at how we can use it for stationary points. And then the next video, that's when we'll deal with this final bullet point where we'll, we'll put it into a, a contextual problem. Right, so. Finding stationary points using numerical methods. So there we go. We've got a curve. So we've got y equals 3 to the power x minus 2 plus 3 bracket x minus 2 all squared. With a stationary point at a. And we've got to use uh, newton raphson to find the correct value of a. And what I'm going to do is just kind of basically essentially confirm it using iterations. So I'm going to demonstrate how to use both methods in this context. So let's start off with that. Now. If we're going to use Newton Raphson, we're going to need to do some differentiating. Now, differentiating this thing is going to be a bit of a problem to begin with, so I'm just going to do a bit of tidying up on that just to make life a little bit easier. So, essentially, what I've done is taken this term here, 3 to the power x minus 2, and written it as 3 to the power x times by 3 to the power minus 2. And 3 to the power minus 2 is simply 1 ninth. So that just makes that easy to deal with because now we've just got to differentiate this bit, and that's easier to work with than that one there. So, off we go. Let's do some differentiating. Now, we need to differentiate 3 to the power x, which hopefully you're happy with is ln 3, 3 to the power x. So, when we differentiate that, that's the result we get there. And then we've got to differentiate 3 to the power x minus 2 squared. So, a bit of chain rule by inspection. That gives us 6 bracket x minus 2. So, there's our differentiated function. And what we're doing is we need to find the turning point. So, we need to find where that thing equals zero. So we need the root of this particular equation here. So what we're doing is solving that thing there. Now this is where notation gets a little bit confusing because essentially what we're going to have to do, we're going to have to differentiate again as part of our newton raphson and that's when we get into technically second differential and that's when I get a bit muddled up with uh, notation stuff. So what I'm going to do is demonstrate how I just get around that. And I do that by renaming this equation here. Let's just call it something different. So I'm not getting confused with fx's. Let's just call it g of x. So we've got to find the root of g of x, where g of x equals 0. To do that, we're going to use newton raphson So we're going to need g dash of x, which uh, means just differentiating this function here. So let's go again. So differentiate 3 to the power x becomes ln 3, 3 to the power x, multiplied by all of this, which is a constant. So we get that, and then differentiate our bit, our bracket 6x minus 2 there, and clearly that's just a constant 6. So there we go, tidy up, I've got ln 3, ln 3, so I can just write that as 1 ninth ln 3 all squared, that's just a constant, times by 3x, 3 to the power x, and then plus 6, so that's g dash x. What we need is from a starting point, so let's use a starting point of x0 equals 2, because that seems fairly close to our graph. Uh, to the turning point that we're looking for. So let's use 2 in here and in here as part of our newton raphson So there's g of 2, which essentially just becomes ln 3, which is 1.098. g dash of 2, so that again becomes nice and simple because what we've got there is essentially ln 3 squared plus 6, which is that value there. Plug it all into newton raphson There it is and you get your value 1.84756. And then if I do a second iteration, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, because it's just a case of taking my value here, 1.84576, and plugging it back into these two, doing the calculation. <coughs> Excuse me. I end up with uh, a second iteration, 1.84548. And there we are. So that's what we're getting as our turning point after two iterations of newton raphson That's our x value of our turning point that's there on our graph. Right, let's just have a look at doing exactly the same process using iteration. So as we had before, we need when f dash x, the gradient of our curve is 0. So that's this function here. So that's the one we need to work with. So what we've got to do is come up with an iterative formula on that. And so what I've done is just take that to the side. I'm going to go rearrange it for this value of x here. So divide by 6 and then add the 2 and we end up with our iterative formula. Now that thing's a little bit messy, so I'm going to do a quick bit of tidying up and deal with the kind of the ninth, the sixth, and, and the constant. Just get it all as a single fraction, and it ends up 
looking like that. And therefore, if I take this one here and turn it into my iterative formula, there it is. So now we've all got that sorted, let's start off with a starting value of 2. Stick that into the calculator, type in the formula, let the calculator do all the hard work, just repeated presses of the equals button, and off we go. And you'll notice by the time we get to x5, we've now got essentially both methods giving exactly the same result to four decimal places. So there we go, our stationary point occurs when x equals 1.8455.